Hello everyone, welcome back. Now that we have understood and implemented linear regression in great details, it's time to understand and implement logistic regression. Logistic regression is the second machine learning algorithm we will be studying. So here we will understand this algorithm using linear algebra, probability and calculus. And then we will implement the model in Python from scratch. Then we will test out the model on a standard data set. Finally, we will compare performance of our model with model from SKLR. So what is logistic regression? Here it is a supervised machine learning algorithm like linear regression, but there is a key difference. In linear regression, the outcome, the label Y belongs to any real number. So all the values of the label can be any real number, but here the Y is either zero or one. So it's a binary class classification algorithm. One stands for positive class, that is the presence of something, and zero for the negative class, absence of something. For example, email classification as spam, y is equal to one, versus non-spam, y is equal to zero. Tumor classification as malignant, y is equal to one, versus benign, y is equal to zero. Now let's take a use case, that is breast cancer Wisconsin data set. So here the input matrix X has dimension 30 cross 569. It means 30 number of rows here. These are the features, mean radius, mean texture, mean perimeter, all these are the features. So this data set is imported from sklearn and to find out more details about this data set, we can visit this URL. And also the label, we can see that one for malignant and zero for benign and the dimension is of course 1 cross 569 and I have shown some of the values of the label. Now let's understand this algorithm. So for any new input with same number of features as that of the training samples, we want to predict either 0 or 1. So how will you do that? So of course linear regression is not going to work for the prediction of negative class or positive class because here we can see that let's say x is a single feature and y x versus y we are gonna plot and a single feature is there so for some data set like let's say this y is either zero for some data set and for some data set it's one so this value is y is equal to one and if you want to fit a straight line that best fits the data for any new input x we can see that the value of y is going to be greater than 1 and for some value of x it's going to be negative y is less than 0. So this is not something we want. So it turns out that linear regression will not work at all. So what is the solution? So of course we need to predict 0 or 1 in terms of probability that we have already studied in math. So we say that probability that y is equal to 1 for any new x new input this probability is something right let's say this is 0.95 so we say 95 percent probability that x falls in positive class so this is the key idea predicting the class the positive or negative class in terms of probability and as we know that probability lies between 0 and 1. So the outcome which we want to predict should lie between 0 and 1 and not any other real number, not greater than 1 or less than 0. How do we implement such algorithm? Fortunately, it turns out that logistic regression is extension of linear regression. We need to apply non-linear transformation on the linear function we considered in linear regression like we considered z is equal to w x plus b and let's say x is a single feature only so w and b are only two parameters unknown so in this case if we apply this non-linear transformation function this function f on z we get a so we want a something to be in between 0 and 1 in this range we want 
And this nonlinear transformation function, which we are going to use, is known as sigmoid or logistic function. And if we plot z versus a here, this is a and this is z. So we can see that the value of a lies between 0 and 1. And this sigmoid function is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative power z. This is a. So this is the plot of this function. So we can also see that for z greater than 0, value of a is greater than 0.5. And for z is equal to 0 exactly, the value is 0 0.5 because z is equal to 0, e to the power negative 0. This will be 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus 0. This is 1 by 1 plus 1 half. And for z less than 0, we can see that this value a is less than 0 0.5 for any z less than 0. And also, when z tends to infinity, the value of a is a is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus infinity, and this value is 0, so it is 1. So we can see that at z is equal to infinity, it will touch at a is equal to 1. And for z tending to negative infinity, if you plug here, it will be 1 over 1 plus e negative negative infinity. It will be positive. So this value will be very large. It will be 0. So we can see that for z tending to negative infinity, this sigmoid curve will touch z is equal to 0 at negative infinity. Now, the second point is redefining the cost function for logistic regression. Why we want to redefine this cost function? Like in linear regression, we use the cost function 1 over 2m, summation i is equal to 1, 2m, zi minus yi whole squared. And here I'm using ai minus yi whole squared because ai is the outcome, right? So this is the cost function z. And if we plug the value of a here, this will be 1 over 2m, i is equal to 1, 2m, ai is 1 over 1 plus e to the power minus z is w, x plus b, and x i am using, minus y i whole squared. Now it turns out that this function is non-convex. So if it is non-convex, it will be very, very difficult for gradient descent to converge to the global minima. That's why we are not going to use this cost function, half of mean squared error. We'll use some other cost function, which we will discuss later on in great details. Before we go into details of the logistic regression algorithm, it is important to note that logistic regression will inherit linear function as it is from multiple linear regression. It means we have discussed this z vector is equal to w vector x. This is the matrix multiplication of the row vector w vector and the input matrix plus b vector. So we will use exactly this equation in logistic regression also. Right? And also we will use same rotation and convention as we used in multiple linear regression. So in multiple linear regression, we used the input matrix as this one. So M is number of training samples, N is number of features, and the label Y vector as Y1, Y2, first training sample, second training sample, MH training example. But in linear regression, Y1, Y2, Y, M can be any real number here. Y1 will be either 0 or 1, either 0 or 1, something like that. So it's a sequence of 0 and 1. It will be 0. So like this, 0, 1, 0. This is the key difference between the label of the linear regression and logistic regression. So, and we have used this. I have shown this here also. And w vector as w1, w2, wn. This is a row vector of dimension 1 cross n. And b vector, b, 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 b. Replication of b here everywhere. So its dimension is 1 cross m. z vector as z1, z2, zm. Where z1 we have already seen in linear regression as w1 x1 for the first training example all these are w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus so on w1 xn plus b similarly for second training example mf training example and that's it so in the next video 
we will go into more details about the logistic regression. If you like this video, do comment below in the comment box and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.